CEO that's stealing money. Same thing with Yahuwah. The Torah is established. I got to fire those I put in place. Go ahead. That's it. That's it. And they kept telling you that the priests were, were um, crooked black That's right. Malachi is about crooked preachers and crooked priests. Yeah. Will a man rob y'all? Yeah, you and the whole nation, because you are giving me bad meats. Huh? Bring the tithes and offering into my storehouse. Storehouse. Not the church. Storehouse. It was a storehouse for store. Store food? It ain't store money? No, it store food. It ain't like Scrooge McDuck, a big old bank that you swim around in, Pastor. Right, 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 right. You Scrooge over there. You dying off in the coins. <laughs> the tables are... <laughs> it's a storehouse for me, so there shall be meat in my house. He said that, didn't he? Why are you twisting that and making it money? So meat is money, though. Meat is food. <laughs> meat is meat. <laughs> meat is meat. Huh? You duck tell me. Go ahead, Tracy. Hey, 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 that's why he said, I come to do the volume of the book. But everything was already set in place. All he had to do through Adam, he had to come through Adam. Why? Because Adam is the one that lost the promise. Now watch this. The reason why it's Adam, because he was Noah's great, 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 great grandfather. You get what I'm saying? It's only one man at that time because the flood they got rid of everybody else. So I come through the person that did this because this person is the one who made all men. By one man's crime, all died. Ain't that what Paul said? What did you say? I'll back that in the back. Then y'all who? He left the time. He said he left the time. That, that, that's a good point. Because if pastors trying to get a pot of gold, they, the rainbow represents the covenant, and they trying to get the use the covenant for the pot of gold. That's deep, huh? Everybody might have lost you on that one, but I got you. Hey. <laughs> they ain't using that covenant for that. Wait, wait. And that's why they allow those who steal the sign of the covenant, the rainbow, <coughs> to free reign See? in that pagan uh, idolatrous system. That's why they let the ones who steal the sign of the covenant come into their churches. See there? They never cut it. That's a good one. Man, that's good. It was never about money. Tithes and offering was never about money. It was oblation and meats. That's why he said, you now are the salt of the earth. Why? You are living sacrifices. Sacrifice, every sacrifice had to have salt. Huh? If He said, if the salt loses its savor, it ain't worthy of anything but, but to be trampled underfoot. You got to keep that salt. You got to keep your sacrifice going. Come on, man. Let's, let's go, man. <laughs> ah, yes, I'm sorry. But can you, j just to solidify, just to even pour more fuel on that fire, can you go in just briefly about even if you didn't have a, a meat or an animal or whatever, or you couldn't get to the appointed place. Right. You couldn't even send money. You could take money and right. get what you needed. You would be you be charged extra for the money that you sent. Right. So it, it, it even was that if you if you tried to pay with money, it was actually a, a upcharge on the money. I believe based on the book, I think it was instead of ten percent, it was twelve percent based on money. So even in that, and it, watch this. I'm glad you brought that up. Even in the mercy of Yahuwah, if you couldn't afford a lamb, you could offer turtle doves. Two turtle doves. Not ten dollars. Not ten dollars. Ten dollars. And then pastors don't even do that. I don't even want nothing to jingle. I want, I want everything to fold. See, they don't even care. But Yahuwah was so gracious that if you couldn't offer a lamb, you could even offer two turtle doves. If you, if you brought money, if you actually brought physical money, it was an, an upcharge for your offering. But you, could, you didn't want to do that.
that all the time. Right. It was only in necessity. Go ahead. That's right. Or a good. Lamb or whatever it was. Yeah. Go ahead, Sam. And then you had that sacrifice. Right. That's what I was getting at. That's yeah, I'm sorry. I'm yeah, sorry. but like where if you like, like she explained, like Steph explained. Yeah. If you couldn't, if you couldn't get it there, for whatever reason you couldn't get it there, right. you could take the money. But you didn't take the money. You take the money to get what you needed. That's right. To get what was the the proper sacrifice or the proper offering. Yeah. Okay. And I, then I, I get it. Yeah. That's I'm what sorry. I was getting. Yeah. 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 Thank you. So basically, to reiterate what you said, when you got to where you were going, you would take the money and buy the proper sacrifice to offer it. That's why I'm thankful for Stella and Crabby. So sometimes I don't catch it, Stella and Crabby. I appreciate that. But this is why I appreciate that clarity. That's why they were they were selling those and things in the temple. They weren't doing gay choir day in the temple. What the reason why he whipped them out? He said, "You have made my house a den of thieves." They were selling. And, and upcharging pretty much for sacrifices in the temple. That's what they were selling about. So that's a great point. So even in this understanding, you don't see tithe nowhere. Matter of fact, let's, let's say that. Because the priesthood changed from Levi to Judah, the only thing done away with was the tithe. Oh, that's it. Teach. That's it. Somebody don't have a problem with that. The only thing done away with in this entire book was the tithe to the Levite. Why? Because you still can do for them, but there's no tithe being brought to his storehouse because the temple ain't there no more. He is the temple. Right. You are the temple. Uh -huh. Huh? And the church is the storehouse. <laughs> the church is not the storehouse. Okay. So you preaching that everything else is done away with Except the tithe. You are backwards in your thinking. Stinking thinking. Go ahead. But the thing That's right. But now you can send up an offering of praise. Set up a sacrifice of praise. Come into the church and just give us a sacrifice of praise. Huh? But ah, what? Ye are a royal priesthood. priesthood. A condition nation. So if you're a royal priesthood, that's right. That means we all should be tied into each other. That's right. That's why. Thank you. That's why they took up money. Let me show you something. Stand up, ah. Stand up, ah. Stand up, ah. Oh, I'm just Stand up. <laughs> this is what happened, and this is what they don't talk about. Act five. Demonstration. Kafa. And whoever was with him would stand there. Right. The rest of the apostles, if they want to, and they would put money at their feet. That money was not to go to them. That money was split among the believers. Uh -oh. Why? Because you all now are royal priesthood. You all. Right. Thank you. I'm going to get there. You gave out the money. Let's put it in our time. If you need a light bill paid, then according to your need, you would get the money to pay that need. If you had a house payment, then you would get a bulk of that money to pay for your need. If you had a phone payment, you would get the bulk of that money to pay for that need. Right. So according to each man's need, right. because we're all priests, we all now have been grafted in the priesthood because we are of Yehuda's priesthood, right. Right. not Levi. So watch this. Come on, baby. They keep all that blessing. Oh, I feel spirit. Oh, I, almost, I feel a preach coming. Oh, you put it in your pocket. Huh? Now let's talk about this. Now this is important stuff. This is all about blood. Watch this in Acts 4. In Acts 4, Barnabas came up, the one who, uh, who, who talked with Shaul and witnessed with Shaul. He comes up, it says he was a Levite. I'll read it in a minute. If he was a Levite, and he knew that this is not the Mashiach of Yahuwah, he should have said, wait a minute. That money's supposed to go to me. Right. right? Right. But because he was a Levite, blood Levite, yep. not what the priests say, not these preachers that say they are Levi, not these fake Jews, he was pure blood Levi. It says he went and he gave what he had to. He had land, so. 
didn't he say that? He had land and sold it. He gave what he had to. Now watch this. Here comes Ananias and Sapphira. They'll preach this to get you to tithe in a minute. Don't you lie on God. Don't lie on them what you give. Because Ananias and Sapphira fell in the temple. This is why. The temple was still standing. They were at Solomon's porch. Read it. Acts 5. Solomon's porch is part of the temple. And because they lied against the Ruach, they defiled the temple and died. It was still Torah in effect, Christian. Torah is always going to be in effect with Yahuwah because it's everlasting. So even after Yahusha, the Torah was still in effect. You know how many times you done lied in that church and gave something else different than what you done said? Why he didn't die? Pastor, why he didn't die? But that ain't his house. That ain't his house. But the true temple was still standing. So when they lied and said they gave, Kafar even pleaded with him. He said, when it was in your hands, it was yours to give. You didn't have to lie to me. You could have gave what you gave. He fell dead. His wife came in. He said, did you give so much? She said, yeah, for so much. He said, because you have lied to the Ruach, the people who drug your husband out of here, I have a door for you, will drag you to and she fell dead. Why? Because Torah says if you defile the temple, just like the priest with a string on his leg, you dead. Huh? So the money was given to be issued out. Why don't we see that in the church? Because they preaching tithes to meet their needs and their needs only. You're a New Testament preacher, right? You're a New Testament preacher. Why you ain't doing what the New Testament said? Because the priesthood is now under a new leader. No, they gave it away. Each had need. No, as they had need. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> and every priest stands daily. Okay, wait. Let me go back up to nine. Boy he says, Lo, I come to do your will, oh y'all. To take away, he takes away the first that he may establish the second. That's not the Torah. That's the priesthood under bad covenant. That's the fake with the real. By which we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Yahusha once for all. And every priest stand daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices, <coughs> which can never take away crimes. But this man, y'all listen, underline it, write it down, do not take it out, highlight it. But this man, after he offered one sacrifice for crimes forever, wow. how could he do something at a point in time, almost 2,000 and a half years ago, how could he do that then and it covers forever? Watch this. It says he went down in the pit and preached to those in prison in 2 Peter 2. How can he do all that? If he's just a man. Daoud couldn't do it. Well, like Daoud, King David couldn't do, couldn't do it. Nobody could do it. How then can this man do this? What manner of man is this? Where even the winds and the sea obey him. See, he's something different. He ain't just a regular guy. He is Yahuwah in the image of flesh. Let's talk about this real quick. That's why when he came back into his body and he walked among them, they didn't even know who he was. Read the book, Luke 24, John 21. They didn't even know who he was. They didn't physically, they didn't even have no understanding who he was. Why? He was trying to show them it ain't about the flesh, it's about the spirit. I don't care if you know an image of me. I'm not on an IUIC t-shirt. Looking like Fred Sample with muscles. It's not about an image. I'm not Bo Bice. Huh? He did, they didn't recognize him until he spoke. Until he operated. Why? He's trying to get them to see that it ain't about the flesh that he in. It's about the spirit in the flesh. Gee. We get so caught up to argue over what he looked like. All I'm telling you was, he ain't those images you see. It's the spirit. And the spirit confirms the spirit. They that worship him must worship in 
spirit and in truth. You can't even worship him in the flesh. Huh? Who do men say I am? You are huh? Shia, son of the living Allahim. Flesh and blood did not reveal this to you. But my father in the Shemayim revealed this. The spirit revealed it. For Yahuwah is spirit. That's what the book say. You're going to get so caught up in fleshly understanding that you're going to miss out on spiritual matters. That's what he told Nicodemus. How are you so torn up about how you can be reborn? That's Yahuwah 3, by the way, or John 3. He says, do you not understand spiritual matters? And you are a teacher of Yasharal? You don't understand that all this is spirit? This is spiritual things we're talking about. This ain't about a man coming as a fleshly man to give himself for people. We're too selfish. No man would have did that. Even him in the, in, the, in the image of flesh, it was hard to do. And he came and said, if this cup could pass from me. What cup? Watch this. That cup of indignation of blood. Great press in Revelation is going to be poured upon the earth. He drunk it for himself, for you. If this cup can pass for me, let it be. But nevertheless, not my will, Father, but yours. What is he praying to? He's not praying to another person. He's praying in the Ruach. It's his spirit talking to himself. Here it is. Man, how in the world can you not understand this and then jump up here like you a teacher and try to teach people? The flesh couldn't take it. So blood, sweat as in drops of blood begin to pour from his head. The flesh couldn't understand such pressure. That's a medical term that says you're under so much pressure that your capillaries burst and blood comes out through your sweat glands. Huh? We have no understanding of spiritual things, but we want to say we conscious and spiritual. You all rebuke you. You have no understanding of what Yahusha did. That's Yahuwah, Yahusha. Let me finish. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for crimes forever, sat down on the right hand of Yahuwah. Does it say beside you? No. Where, where do we get this beside from? Sat down on the right hand. He is the Yud of Yahuwah. My right hand is the strength. It's all through the book. Then his right hand will save, right? His saving right hand. So what he did was simply extended the hand. Huh? You would rather take all state. You in good hands. <laughs> he extended his hand. Think of a puppet. He extended his hand. The very hand where he wrote the Torah. Uh, written with the finger of, un, of Allahim. The very hand of Torah. I'm going to put it in flesh. The Torah made flesh. Huh? The right hand. The strength. Wow. And so after you did what you did to him, he put that hand, walked 40 days, and I'm going to release this hand and spirit now. And I'll bring it back to myself. Wow. Wow. So now you're ready to receive the Ruach. Huh? At Shavuot. Sabbaths again. Pentecost. You see what I'm saying? That's why he did it. The right hand of Yah became flesh. Yahuwah can do anything. What did he make Adam with? With his own what? His own hands. See? His hands came down again to create his first son. See? From the virgin ground, the virgin birth, right there in your eye. No corruption. No corruption. He took a virgin, the earth, and he formed with his own hand his son. See how? So why wouldn't he do it again? He says, I'm unchangeable. I, Yahuwah, change not. Right? From this source, expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. That's Psalms 2. Write it down. Kiss the son lest he be angry and perish in the way. 
Proverbs 34. What is his name? What is his son's name? If you can tell me. That word son, we take so much weight on it in the English. Banai or ban actually means to offspring, to spring forth. See? It's just he sprung forth. You don't get it because you're thinking carnal things. Spiritually, it's all there. Because once you lay out the mysteries of Yahuwah without controversy, Shaul said it, they're right there. For by one offering has he perfected forever them that are sanctified. Whereof the Ruach HaKadosh also is a witness unto us. For after that he said, for after that he had said before, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says Yahuwah. I will put my Torah into their hearts and into their minds I will write it. And their crimes and Torahless deeds I will remember no more. Now where remission of these is, there is no more offering for crime. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the Kadesh by the blood of Yahusha. You can boldly come to him with no blood offering now. Once you repent and you come to Yahuwah, you can boldly come to the throne of the Most High to present your case. To petition. Hallelujah. By a new and living way, he has consecrated for us through the veil that is to say his flesh. Wait, there was a veil hanging in the temple. You couldn't come to the Holy of Holies or the Kadesh of Kadesh with that flesh in the way. <laughs> with the veil in the way. So now he got rid of the flesh so that the spirit could operate. Say it again. Through the veil, that is to say his flesh. So when he said it is finished and he gave up the Ruach, his head dropped, it says the veil was splitting from top to bottom. To let you know, no man did it. It ran in two. Both veils were torn that day. Come on, man. And having a high priest over the house of Yahuwah, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of belief, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. That's immersion. See that? Let us hold fast the profession of our belief without wavering, for he is faithful that promise. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and good works. Now, he's telling you how to operate as the body of Mashiach. Since he did everything, it's easy now to love. Love doesn't do away with the Torah. Love fulfills the Torah. It obeys. It obeys the Torah. Huh? Watch this. A faith, hope, and love, he says. The greatest of these is love. Why is that? Belief is going to bring you to walk in it. Hope is going to hope for the resurrection, but love is greater because love is going to make you obey Yahuwah and love your neighbor as yourself. If you love me, keep my commandments. Yes, ma'am. Wow. Wow. Something powerful and spiritual happened when that veil was torn. It was an earthquake that day. Everything went black. It was a spiritual, it was a spiritual happening like we won't see until he returns. But these feasts are representative of that. That was Passah when that happened. Come on, let's, uh, let's keep going. Uh -huh. it, it also shows it also shows that the holy place, the most holy place, wasn't done away with. It was just the veil. That's right. It was the boundaries that were done away with. That, the right. place, See that? The place still existed. Ain't that something? And it also did away with the the fact that only the high, only the, the certain people could, could enter in. But now we're all a royal peace. Uh, we're all a royal peace. So we all have access now. That's to that right. Throne, so. Even the Grafstidian can come in. Isaiah 56. 56. We talked about that this morning. Ain't that something? So everybody can come in now. But then that, that gives you also um, to think about it also the sense of how the high priest had to 
present themselves to you who are going to go into the veil, how they had to be, you know what I'm saying, crime free and come with blood. And that's just that veil that anybody can come into, but at the same time, you had to be mindful that you can't just come into your hood any kind of way. Right. Because he yeah. don't hear a criminal's prayer. Right. Which is what Christianity has taught us we can do. That's right. right. Christianity taught us that we can come anyway, but they're not telling us repentance. Why? Hashatan cannot understand repentance. That's why Christianity teaches that repentance is works. They have told me this. They have rebuked me for this. Repentance is not works. Repentance is a work of salvation. Right. It's not works as in the sense of self-righteous works. So let's put it like that. Right. Repentance is a work, but it's not a self-righteous work. It's a work instructed of you to do by Yahuwah. Right. Repent. For the day of Yahuwah is at hand. Right. When they said, what must we do? Repent. All huh? And be immersed in the Ruach HaKadosh of Yahusha HaMashiach and you shall receive the gift huh? of the Ruach HaKadosh. Repentance is necessary. Why do you think we have a day of Teshuvah? Repentance. It's atonement. You are saying I afflict myself because I need you. I want to make it right with you. That's coming back to your first love. Revelation, the very end of the book, Christian, says you have left your first love. But this I say unto you, repent. That's right. Every time he says it, repent. How in the world is repentance worse if he's telling you the only way I can save you, the only way I can help you, the only way I can show my love for you is repentance. Repentance is necessary for anything. But Hashitan can't understand it because he can never go back. So what he does is say, you're not worthy. You're not worth it. Huh? He keeps feeding the same lies. He don't understand a heart that turns to Yahuwah. That's why he kept coming after those people the same way, the same temptations, the same tricks, the same traps. Because if it don't happen, something's wrong. Huh? And if you don't repent, he got you. That's right. So, right. so the reason why, the reason why, every apostle taught repentance. That's right. The same. These every the, the, the apostles that the lying religious churches say uh, say uh, get their doctrine from. Every last one of them taught repentance. That's so right. the bottom line is that what you just explained is the reality that either we have to face or we just don't face. But the but the Christian church can't repent because his daddy Hashatan can't repent. That's right. See. That's just the bottom line. Repentance is not there. So those who wake up to the truth, when this is pressing on your heart, this is repentance. This is not a light thing. When you say you want to come to your Ruach and get your life right, I rejoice. Why? Because only a Ruach of repentance, only a Ruach inside, a spirit inside of you of repentance can allow you to say, I need the truth. Huh? Yes, ma'am. means to turn back to. That's repentance. You get what I'm saying? You can't turn to Yahuwah and then say, well, what you said is perfect. I'm going to do this and then I repent afterwards. That's not repentance. You're still wicked. And what you're doing is, I'm going to offer a bad sacrifice to Yahuwah even while I do this. Yeah. And a lot of the problem though is because you have those teachers and pastors who don't teach repentance. They tell you to repent, but they don't tell you what to repent from. That's right. So you got people that saying, well, I repent, I repent for what I've done. But what are you repenting from? Right. If you got a pastor that's teaching, that's not teaching you to obey the commandments and obey Torah, you know, he, he tell you the law is done away with and all this. Right. What are you repenting from? Right. You're still eating pork. You're Come still praying on, for uh. But you're not keeping the feast. You don't know what a feast day is. Right. Teach, uh. How are you repent? How can you repent? Right. If they not teach you what repentance is, you're you not going to be repentant. Teach. 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 Yeah, he know my heart. Right. 
See, this is not, that's not repentance. While we on this, let, let's touch on this. Atonement is about to come up. But, but it's only for those who want to keep feast. You can't say I repent and then don't keep a feast. Teach, huh? it's, it's, that's an oxymoron. Teach. I'm, I'm, I'm repenting. But I don't want to keep no feast. Right. I'm gonna, me and my son are going to be Pokemon for Halloween. But God loves my heart. He loves me, baby. Teach, huh? I'm his, and he is mine. Well, they'll preach down something, won't they? They'll, well, they'll, set you, they'll make you step back like, boy, that was heavy. But it ain't no heavy. It is sin. It is crime against your whore. Go ahead. And you can't be talking about atonement coming up and still trying to keep up mess and not repent. You That's it. Actually repent. That's you it. You can't say, oh, atonement coming up and still trying to it keep It don't mess. work that way. It don't. True repentance is a heart of forgiveness. Let me tell you about the prodigal son. When the prodigal son came back to his father, read it. It says that to the father he was dead. He was dead. His father did not leave that porch to look for him. You will never find that in this story. The father was still on his throne. When the son came towards him, he jumped off. Ran to meet his son, kissed him, Put a ring on his hand. He met him coming. Why? I see you trying to come back. Uh-oh. I see you trying to come to me. If you ain't trying to come back, the father is not moved. Christianity teaches this. God is so grieved at the world nowadays. He's so grieved in his heart. He's grieved. No, he is not. He can't look up on crime. He don't even see this world. But he hears about it. And he sends his Malachim to do judgment against it. His angels. He hears about it, but he ain't grieved. You know why he ain't grieved? I'm not moved because I sent my son to do the work. I came myself and handled it. Huh? That's why I'm not grieved at anything. I'm allowing the prodigal children to come to me. Those who really want me, those are the ones that's going to be in my kingdom. I'll jump off the throne for them. Watch this. It says that Stephen, when he was being stoned, looked up. And he said, he seen y'all shot standing there. Come on. Come on. Oh. Come on. Oh, Just yeah. come on here. It don't matter. Let them do whatever they do to you. And he says, I see him standing at the right hand. They stopped their ears. Why? Because y'all shot had told them. He said, I adjure you by the living Allahim. Are you the son of your whore? Allahim. He said, you have said it. And you shall see me on the right hand from Woo. this point forth. So when they heard Stephen say, I see him standing, they remembered that. Yeah. Huh? He was saying, come on. Come on. Y'all, yeah. he calling to us. This pull you have on you about repentance and getting right is a pull of your whore. Saying, come on. You already headed there. That's why you can't sleep until you get it right. You already on the road. See, the son was on the road. He wasn't still out there with them harvests. He wasn't still laying in the sow, the sow mud that he was in. Right. Watch this. He said, I can go back to my father. I can just tell him I'll be a servant. He wouldn't even try to put himself in a place of a son. He said, I can just go back and I'll work for him. His father said, no, you a son. Huh? This story was given by Yahusha to tell us how important his blood is to us. If you ain't got no repentant heart, you will never understand this book. It will never get you to where you need to be. But with repentance comes pain. It comes admission. It comes rejection. It comes hurt. That's why it says count up the cost if you're going to be a disciple. You'll cry a lot of light nights, but I guarantee you, like Shaul said, the pains, the small suffering that I have in this life doesn't even compare to the esteem and honor that I'm going to receive in the next life. It don't even compare to it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Man, I'm telling you, let the world reject us. We keep his feet. We his children. We are already at the feast when the ceremony go down. Right, right. Huh? We are 
already waiting. Come on, man, let's go. Let's finish this. <laughs> Let us hold fast, 23, 10, 23. Listen to this. To the profession of our faith without wavering. Now we're finna get an understanding of this. For he is faithful. I will not. That promise. Let us consider to one another. Provoke unto love. Provoking unto love is just like provoking unto wrath. You can provoke somebody to get mad, then you should provoke them to love you. Have you put effort in to love your brother? Amen. Come on, I'll teach. Have you? When I say brother, I'm talking about all of us as one. Have you made an effort to love? Teach. Provoking to love. I provoke you to love me. Huh? And to good works, not forsaking, here we go, the assemblings of ourselves together. Why you ain't coming to church? <laughs> they use that, don't they? This is about a feast. This is feast time stuff. This ain't no church building. Why? How do I know that? Because he told you the tabernacle was torn down. Where were they assembling it? Huh? The tabernacle's gone. The assembling of it yourselves is keeping the feast. Let's keep going. So. <coughs> Man, he threw me <laughs> Not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as the manner of some is. Why he says the manner of some is? There's Hebrews that don't keep the feast. Let's be honest. They feel like they ain't got to do it no more. They are in captivity, they say. I ain't seen that nowhere. But exhorting one another as much the more, listen, as you see the day, what day of Yahuwah approaching? Every feast represents a day of Yahuwah to get ready for it. Man, come on. I, I got it on the shirt. I was, I'm already crunk about it. When it comes down, Sukkot, tabernacle with him. This is the time he's going to come back. Why? Because this was the time he came the first time. So don't forsake the assembling of yourselves in these feasts. As some do. But exhort one another to do so as you see the days approaching. See, it's not about a church building. They want to guilt you so bad. Don't forsake the assembly to one another. Let's keep going. For if we commit crime willfully, after we have received, why did he say commit crime willfully right after telling us to keep a feast? You know the feast. Huh? Uh-huh. That's why Shaul, when they told him that they were going to kill him in Jerusalem, he said, I must by all means keep the feast. Don't stop me. Huh? He was willing to die. The prophet said, this is the way the man is going to be bound in his girth. The way I got to be bound up like this, this is what's going to happen to that man. He said, why y'all break my heart? You're crying over me. I must keep the feast by all means. Watch this. Yahusha, I think it's uh, John 7, Yahusha, his brother said, they were looking to kill him. And his brother said, well, you going to go to Jerusalem anyway? They looking to kill you. It says he showed up at the feast disguised. They don't tell him what he looked like, bro. He got all power. He was at the feast, though. They didn't have to see him. Yahuwah did. Huh? And he, watch this, he got bold and then said, y'all seeking to kill me. At the feast. You got a devil. Right? Who, who trying to kill you? All that mattered was his feast. The feast. The feast. Not holidays. Not your Halloweens. St. Patrick's. Christmas. None of that. It's all about his feast. Why? Because these are more than appointed times for you to see that you're his children. He want to see if you're going to stand against this wicked society and keep his time. In the midst of them changing times and laws. Yeah. Huh? Let's finish this. But if you commit crime willfully, after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remains no more sacrifice. Wow. For crimes. If you willfully reject his truth. Come on. He can't, he can't help you. What I tell you about the prodigal son, if you don't come back, he ain't coming off that porch. Huh? The least quoted scripture in the They don't want to talk about it. The least quoted scripture. For real. Watch this. For a certain fearful looking of for looking for 
door of judgment. That's that day he was talking about. Remember the day I told you. For a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour the adversaries. What does that mean? If you don't come to him, you are his enemy by default. Right. Teach up. The day of fire. Let me, let me say this. I, I'm not going to miss a second. I told a pastor this verse. He said, oh, man, that's, that's heartburn and indigestion. Oh, yeah. what? I promise you. I swear by the whore. Because I'm going to say you can do it. You know the pastor. He, I told him that this meant that it was going to be a punishment because he believed in once saved, always saved. And I read this. He said, oh, son, that's, that's heartburn and indigestion. Yeah. And diarrhea? No, he just said heartburn and indigestion. Oh. Don't add to his tour. <laughs> <laughs> I cried. As my, I cried like a baby talking to me. I said, how in the world can you help people get out of their situations if you believe something like that so foolish? That day that he just talked about, his fiery indignation is against his adversaries on that day. That day is going to be a day of, man, you think earthquakes and floods and stuff? You see how Irma and all these folks doing? You think that's something? Nothing. Wait till he is, when he, he puts out snow and then hail and then rain and then fire mingled with rain and then frost and then earthquakes, tornadoes, storms, all that in and watch this. It says his hand will still be outstretched on him. He won't even move it. Oh, woo! Man. He won't move it. You better teach. There is nobody can make him re relent. He won't repent that time. There, he said no one in that day. Who shall be able to stand against the day of your Watch this. What do I got stretched out? Right, 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 right hand. hand. That's, right. That's why we believe Yahushua is coming. When that right hand comes, it's over. Because he came the first time to help you. Right. Oh, Jerusalem. Jerusalem. How I long to pull you under my wings like a hand. I'm begging you to come to me. But you have rejected me. So this time, there's no repentance. You better get right before he comes. Yes, ma'am. I just was going to say, I just don't understand what the point of keep going back to the church. If you said one saved, always saved. If I went up there, I gave my life, why come back? That's what I'm saying. I just think those children right should be. That's a good point. Yeah. It's a lie. That is something. It's a lie. That's a good point. That's why the dope dealer that got baptized at the age of five or was baptized at the age of five. That's why he saved at the age of five. That's why they preach him into the, the kingdom when he died. You know he just had some keys on him when he got popped. He got a ball in the box. <laughs> but he tied last week. Right. But he tied then. Let me tell you something. We was at a funeral, and they said because he acknowledged the pastor mm -hmm. that he made it in the kingdom. I sat there crying. They thought I was moved because of who died. I was crying because of the lies that this pastor told while strippers, drug dealers, and bouncers were sitting in that club. I mean, in that church in the club. <laughs> sitting in that church. They told it because you acknowledged and gave tithes, you will make it in the kingdom. He told them that. Huh? That's why one saved always saved is a lie. There's a fiery indignation against the adversaries. Watch this. He that despised Masha's Torah. I thought this New Testament. Why did he go back to the Torah in the fiery indignation of the adversaries? Why would he go back to Masha's Torah if it don't matter? Tell what happened. Let's finish this, man. This blood. It's all blood. He that despised Masha's Torah died without the mercy. Leo. About two, two or three witnesses. Leo. Nope. Leo. Died without mercy. Oh. Why would he bring up Masha's Torah? By two or three witnesses. Of how much sore punishment suppose you that he shall be thought worthy who have trodden under the foot, trodden under foot the son of Allahim and have counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unkadesh or unrighteous thing and have done oh, despite oh. unto the ruach oh. of what? favor of mercy. Ah, uh, 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 what Christianity does not tell us is that what he just said is that it's going to be worse. And he just said that that doing um that um doing despite to the ruach 
is breaking his commandments. That's it. He just said it. So he's saying the better covenant is oh, stronger man. than the Torah of Masha. Why? Because the Torah became flesh and shed blood. Man. Huh? This book, I'm reading it. If you tried that blood underfoot, see, Christianity do it every day. It's said by two or three witnesses. Now watch this. Heaven and earth are the witnesses of Torah. And in the two or three witnesses, mercy, without mercy, they were punished. Watch this. But because you say you have received that blood, you have the Shemayim now witnessing. Because that, that was the pattern that was made in the first place. Man, man, man. You got angels witnessing more than two or three. That's why Shaul said be careful that you entertain angels unaware. You entertaining them for a worse punishment. Let's keep going. Man, man. For we know him that has said vengeance belongs unto me. I will repay, says Yahuwah. And again, Yahuwah shall judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall in the hands of a living Y'all, Christians say angry. No, he said living. I'm alive. And he's going to come down and he's going to stretch out his right hand. He's going to come to the earth. Revelation 6, you can read it. It says, hide us from Yahuwah and the Lamb. Same person. He's going to say, I'm alive. I love this song. He's going to say, I'm alive. Huh? Here I go. But when he comes,